red book, we'll sing about victory in Jesus this afternoon. flood I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere I knew him and all oh, my love is due him he plunged me to victory Find about 10 or 12 people, shake their hands, and tell them it's good to be in the Lord's house on a Tuesday evening. He has built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all oh, my love is due him he plunged me to victory amen you can be seated tonight good to be in the lord's house amen i appreciate everybody being here Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and then we're going to get into the service tonight. Um, with it being our regular Wednesday night, just moved back to Tuesday night, let me make mention of a few prayer requests. I'm not going to go through our whole list, uh, uh, but let me make mention of a few requests tonight. Um, if you will, continue to pray for Brother Leonard Mooncaster. Leslie and I went to Baptist today and visited with him a little bit. Um, he is off of the vent now, and um, he is responding some. Um, he's opening his eyes a little bit, not a whole lot, but he is a little bit. Um, I really believe he knew who I was today whenever I started talking to him. Um, of course, he knows who Miss Lisa is, uh, who Brother Will is, Miss Kim is, and um, just was able to have a good visit with him, but he's got a long, long, long road to recovery. Um, so do pray for him and pray that the Lord would help him and uh, meet the needs there. And then continue to pray. Brother Josh, make sure I get this right. Forrest Gillimore or Gallimore? Gallimore. Um, while we was there, that was the young man, 17 years old from here in the county um, last week that was rushed down there. Um, while we was there, we actually visited with his family. They're all from right around. I, I knew part of them once we got there and started talking to them, but uh, to make a long story short, he was able to come off of the vent today and um, was able to talk just a little bit to him. So do remember that family and uh, pray for them. Boy, I couldn't imagine what they're going through right now, how they feel. 
Um, so do pray for them and pray that the Lord would help them and meet the needs with that. Amen. Then let's pray for our service tonight. Pray that the Lord helps us in it. Man, I've been excited to get back to church tonight. Amen. Let's pray that the Lord helps us tonight in the service, gives us exactly what we stand in need of. Pray that the Lord helps the preacher tonight, amen, and uses him. Then remember all of our preachers out of the church. Pray that God would give them a good service tomorrow. I about said tonight, a good service tomorrow night. And uh, the Lord will meet the needs of them. Amen. So good to see Brother Jake tonight. Preacher, how about you open this up in prayer, if you will. Yeah, man, let me make just two or three quick announcements. Don't forget, no service tomorrow night, but services on Sunday. Hey, man, looking forward to a good day. Of course, Sunday school at 10 o'clock, preaching at 11 o'clock. Then back Sunday evening at Island Ford Baptist Church. We'll not be here. Um, we're moving our service to Island Ford Baptist Church in Jonesville. Um, the choir will be singing, and I'll be preaching that night, kicking off their revival. And uh, we've done that now for several years to kick off his revival. I always enjoy going. And um, I know this, I was talking to him today, and I know um, over this past year they've grown a lot at their church, and We've grown a lot at our church, so I'm not sure where everybody's going to go when we get there, but we're going to get there, praise God, and uh, we'll have a good time. I'm excited about it, man, and uh, I love Brother Kennedy, so we'll be there on Sunday night, or not, yes, on Sunday night, so do remember that, and then service on Wednesday night. Pray for me on Saturday evening. Uh, I'll be preaching in Hamptonville, and then Sunday morning here, Sunday night, there at Island Ford Tuesday night. I'll be over at Calvary, so pray for us. Um, these upcoming meetings that the Lord would help us. Don't forget Friday night will be our couples night out at the Daniel Boone Inn uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. That is at 5 o'clock. Now they'll open the room up at 4.30 uh, um, but at 5 o'clock, is everybody hearing me? At 5 o'clock they're going to start bringing food out. You say, well, what if I'm not there? They're going to start bringing food out at 5 o'clock, okay? And uh, I'm looking for it. You know what? Usually people's not too late for food. Ain't nobody going to say amen, are they, deacon? But anyway, 5 o'clock, they'll bring the food out, and uh, we're going to have a good, good time. The cost on that um, is twenty-eight sixty-eight per a person. That includes your taxes uh, and your tip. So it's all included. That's not a couple. That is a person, okay? So do remember that. And uh, they do not take credit card. Um, they only take cash or a check. So do remember that. Um, so if you get there and you've got a credit card, um, I don't know. I guess you're going to have to wash dishes, amen? Uh, but anyway, do remember that. We'll have a good time on Friday night. Then I got a note here, April the 14th will be a baby shower for Brother Caleb and Miss Caitlin. Uh, do remember that, and we'll say more about that as we get closer. And then also, um, we've had to move our Public Officials Appreciation Day. Um, it was going to be the last Sunday in April. We've moved that to the first Sunday in May. And the main reason we done that, I really wanted Brother Bradley Boone to come preach that. Um, of course, he pastors there in Burnsville. Um, but Brother ba Bradley also works for Yancey County Sheriff's Office. He's the founder of 10-8 Ministry. And um, so he's going to be with us that Sunday morning. Uh, and uh, that'll be a great, great morning in the Lord's house. I'm ex That's always a big day for us. Amen. And uh, I'm excited about it. I know we have a lot of public officials here. And let's begin praying now. Uh, that God would save somebody in that. Amen. And uh, there'll be a lot of lost people here that day, and I'm looking forward to it. Know that we're going to have a good time. Saturday evening, uh, weather permitting, I'll be back this way by 8 o'clock Saturday evening. Uh, and Saturday evening, weather permitting at 8 o'clock, um, we're going to meet out at the altar and have special prayer out at the altar, just have a time of praying and uh, thanking God for what He done in the month of March. Amen. We prayed for God to give us 
a great month, and he did. Uh, so I think it's only right that we take a minute and praise him for that. Amen. And uh, if you want to meet with us, matter of fact, we've been having some work done out in there. And uh, man, I'm telling you, it's looking tremendous. I know you can't see it right now. You'll see it more um, as the days go on. But man, it's been cleaned up really nice out there around that now. There's plenty of room out there. And um, that's a special place. Amen. We prayed for God to give us that land. He did. And you that don't know the story, the biggest tree that was on that land whenever we cut it down, um, we took it to Brother Brent that's in heaven now, but we took it to Brother Brent and uh, he saw the heart of that log out. It's about this thick and about this wide and we built an altar out of it out there in the woods. And man, that's a special place to go pray. Um, so we'll meet out there Saturday evening at 8 o'clock and have a special prayer meeting. Amen. Most important thing, don't forget church on Sunday. Amen. Pray that God gives us a good day. Ladies Ensemble, come on and sing tonight. I just wanted to get all of that out of the way. Now that it is, praise God, we can go to meeting. Amen. And uh, I love to hear our Ladies Ensemble. They're going to sing a couple tonight. And uh, then after they get done, uh, my girls will sing a couple. And we'll turn the preacher loose. Amen. Amen. Daddy, give us an update on the jail ministries while we're waiting. Dried up to a rock pile on the outskirts of a town. There nailed to a torture track as his mockers gathered round. A blackened sky spoke thunder when he finally bowed his head. And he who had given life back hung there dead.
the best thing that's ever happened to us. Amen. I felt like I was in a stampede there for a second. He is the best thing that's ever happened to us. Amen. And uh, I sure thank the Lord for it. Amen. And the girls, y'all come on and sing a couple for us right before the preacher. And preacher, when they're done, you just come right on and preach to us. Boy, I love Brother Hazlip. Amen. He's a blessing. And uh, I thank the Lord for him. Amen. I thank him for the great preaching last night. Dad and I was talking. It's just exactly what we need. Just line upon line, precept upon precept. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to stay in this thing of serving God, you're going to have to be determined. Amen. And uh, we got a lot of people that just quits over anything. Man, they just throw in the towel over anything. Thing. And uh, we already determined by the grace of God that we're going to finish. Amen. You worship with the girls. There was a king who got a letter, a mighty army without number, spread it out there for the Lord to get of you. God sent a promise and just one angel. The devil's army met his doom. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. It's my mountains, parted rivers, brought the dead to life again. I've called upon an old prayer warrior a time or two. If you're in trouble, I'll go down on my knees and pray for you. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. I see a mama and a baby fall for his life the whole night through. It seemed no hope was gone, oh how the tears fell, not a few. But there's old grandpa in the corner. He knew the one who'd see him through. The baby's still alive to prove what prayer can do. It's me mountains, parted rivers, brought the dead to life again. I called upon an old prayer warrior a time or two. If you're in trouble, I'll go down on my knees and pray for you. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day I don't borrow from its sunshine skies may turn to gray. I don't worry or the future for I know what Jesus said him for he knows what is ahead many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand
it may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrows, he's the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion, it may be through the flames or flood, but his presence goes before me. singing tonight. Let's all stand together this evening if you would and uh, it's a real joy to be able to be back again at Amazing Grace Baptist Church. I appreciate the opportunity tonight and uh, I do thank the Lord uh, that God allows me to get to do uh, what I do from time to time and I certainly enjoy it and I appreciate the Lord allowing me to do it and uh, I do want to say real quickly tonight that uh, I do appreciate what God's been doing here uh, in this ministry, uh, I get a chance to talk to Brother Jonathan occasionally, and uh, he'll share with me some things God is doing, and so just praise the Lord for that. And uh, you keep praying for us. Uh, we just finished a building program going into the next building, and uh, as I said to you last night, uh, there's a lot of things that go along with that. Uh, so you pray for us uh, as we do those things that God will continue to bless them. Don't forget the Jubilee next week. If you get a night or two, get any free time, want to come down and be with us. We'd love to have you each and every night. And then even on Friday, if you want to come Friday morning for a good morning service and you need uh, lunch with us and come back for the evening service, whatever you want to do there. We'd love to have you. And uh, we're expecting a good time of the Lord next week. Uh, Nehemiah chapter number 12 tonight, uh, if you would, Nehemiah chapter number 12 tonight. And uh, I want to share just a few things with you tonight here from Nehemiah chapter number 12 this evening. And I trust that uh, the Lord uh, will, will help us. I love these kind of meetings because I, I don't feel like that I am, uh, I'm not here to perform. And uh, I, I, listen, I love camp meetings and jubilees, and, and we're having one next week, obviously. But I, I want to say this, and I mean this tonight. It's a joy when you've been a pastor long as I have to be able to go into churches and just do your best to give them something that a pastor would preach to them. And uh, I like to do that, and I thank the Lord for it. And uh, I want to say this to you tonight before I read just one verse tonight. I want to say this to you tonight, that sometimes, if we're not careful, uh, the greatest attack of Satan will come after the greatest victories. And you need to understand tonight that when we as God's children I experience those times of victory, those times when God does a great work, those times when God is moving, then we have to be careful because Satan has a desire 
He does not want our cup running over. He does not want us to have all the joy uh, that we could have. And so we have to be sure that we guard ourselves and be sure that we stay where we need to stay with the Lord. Well, we come to Nehemiah 12. In Nehemiah 12 tonight, you'll find one verse that I'm interested in tonight. This is after, of course, the walls have been built. Nehemiah has gone through this great work that God had placed on his heart. He had fought opposition, but God had gave him the victory. And I want to say this tonight. There are more victories in the Christian life than there are defeats. Amen. How about the rest of you? There are more defeats in the Christian life than uh, uh, more victories than defeats. In verse number 13, chapter 12, and the priests and the Levites purified themselves and purified the people and the gates and the wall. I want to preach a few moments on that verse because what's happening here is the people of God are going to worship. And in order to worship, there's some things that has to be done. And I want to preach tonight on this thought, cleaning up for worship. Cleaning up for worship. And let me just say this tonight. There is two things I believe that God left us on this earth to do after he saved us. Uh, there's no need of us just being saved and doing nothing. There are two things I believe God left us for. Number one is to share the gospel. I believe that we are to share the word of God, the gospel everywhere we can. And the second thing I believe is, is God left us here to worship him and lift him up. And listen, we are way behind on worshiping God. Amen. And so tonight, a few moments, I want to preach a little bit on how to clean up for worship. Let's bow together and pray. Father, thank you, Lord, tonight for the wonderful Spirit of God. Lord, the ladies were just tremendous tonight. Uh, Lord, what an ensemble tonight and good singing. And Lord, even better than that, a good touch. Lord, I thank you for the young ladies that sung the specials for us tonight. Lord, I appreciate Young people that are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Doesn't matter if daddy's a preacher or if he's not. Lord, it's got to be in their heart. And I'm glad, Father, to be around these young people. I can tell, Lord, that God is in their heart. Lord, I pray you'll bless Amazing Grace Baptist Church. I pray you'll bless Brother Barker, Miss Leslie. Lord, I pray, God, that the best is yet to come. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll continue to do a work here. And Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity and the honor to preach tonight in this pulpit. Lord, Brother Barker could have got anyone to stand here. Lord, I'm so honored tonight that he would ask me to preach in this pulpit. Lord, I pray now, bless tonight's service. We'll give you the glory for all you do. For we ask it in Christ's name. And all God's people said... Amen. You can be seated. The Bible tells us in Psalm 100, many of us can quote this psalm. The Bible says, Enter to its gates with thanksgiving, and do enter its courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. Listen, can I say tonight, I believe with all my heart, as we come into the house of God, I tell my church this all the time. When we come to church, there ought to be one agenda when we come. That's not to get a handshake from a pastor. That's not to get a pat on the back for something we've done. Uh, but when we come to the house of God, and we walk through the door, we ought to come to the house of God with a spirit of worship on our heart. Friend, I'm telling you what God does. He inhabits the praise of His people. You want God to show up in a church, you just worship Him. You want God to show up at the house of God, you praise Him and He will show up. Amen. Now everything that's mentioned today is not praise. 
There are some things a day are not praise. Singing seven words 500 times until everybody's swaying and the lights are flashing and the fog machine's rolling. Uh, listen, that's not worship. That's a rock concert. I want you to understand tonight that real worship is a holy time. It is a place when God moves among us. I've been in worship services uh, was so loud you couldn't hardly hear the person beside of you. Matter of fact, I tuned in the other night and watched a little bit of that meeting y'all were in of Brother Jeremy's. And I tell you what, I, I sent a text to Brother Cooper. I said, I don't think you breathe for about 20 minutes. I mean, buddy, God was in that thing. You can have worship like that. But I've also been around where worship is quiet and worship is holy. Matter of fact, Dr. Scott Calder said it well to me one time when Dr. Calder said this. He said, sometimes deep water runs quiet. And I'm convinced of that. I've never forgot that statement. And listen, I want you to understand, we need to clean up for worship. Now you say, preacher, where are you going to? Well, let's look back at the text. I want you to see in verse number 30, three areas of cleanup as a way of just introduction, and you know I'll get you toward 8 o'clock, and if you act like you're having a good time, we'll go home. All right? Three areas here. First of all, I want you to see that the priests were purified. Other words, we could say it like this. The preachers around Nehemiah had to get right with God. Amen. Now listen, I, I'm not going to carry this far. I'm just going to mention a few things and move right on. I've been in the ministry now since I was 20 years old. I'm 59. That's 39 years of my life. Most of it pastor in the Baptist church. And I want you to understand something. I have always tried to be a gentleman when it comes to other men of God. I've always tried to be a gentleman when it comes to other people's ministries. I don't know that me many things that Brother Jonathan and I would differ on. Uh, we both have a heart for missions. We both have a heart for work. Uh, we both love old time preaching and we both really love Brother Barker. And so I don't know. I don't know if we'd have a lot. But I guarantee if I stayed around here long enough, I'd find something Brother Jonathan does that I would do different. And if he was around me long, he'd find something I do uh, that he would do different. What I'm trying to say is this. Uh, we don't have to have every T and every I uh, dotted to love each other and to serve God. But I do believe we got to have our doctrine right. Amen. If we're going to have worship, I'm convinced preachers need to get right with God. Y'all are amen that. You don't get to do that much. Amen. Preachers ought to get right with God. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Listen, I, I, I know we use social media as a tool. I realize it can be a good thing. Uh, we have our Jubilee meetings on it. We have preaching on it. I get a little nervous about what I say sometimes because it goes everywhere. But we have preaching on it. Uh, we use it for a lot of different things. It's not a bad thing. But I want you to understand this. More preachers have ruined their testimony because of social media than about anything. Friend, we need to be careful how we live. We need to clean up. Amen. Need to clean up. Amen. When I leave this thing one day, I want to be able to look back on it and know and know that as a man of God, I tried to keep myself clean. I try to keep myself right. Not perfect, not perfect, but I want to make sure, listen, in order to worship, the priest must be clean. I'll never forget several years ago, several years ago, I was preaching in a meeting at a state. And I was preaching in a meeting, and I never volunteer anything to a pastor. If I walked in and one row of his church was standing on their head, if that's the way he wants it, hallelujah, let them stand on their head. Amen. That's his church. I never, I never, listen, it's not my church to pastor. I'm there to preach, stay in the Bible, help the people of God, and move on down the road. Don't leave him no mess to clean up. But I want you to understand something. I want to get a hold of this. If they do ask me, it's hard not to share if they really want to. But I do my best not to. So this preacher I'm preaching for, I've been in the meeting and uh, finally got at the end of the meeting. He said, Brother Hazel, I want you to help me. I said, all right. He said, Brother Hazel, he said, this something ain't right. He said, I'm convinced something ain't right. He said, can you just tell me what you see that's not right? 
And I said, brother, I said, I'll be honest with you, I'd rather not. I'd rather not. I said, if you don't mind, I'd rather not. He said, preacher, no, wait a minute. He said, we've got the right standards. We got the right music. We got the right Bible. He said, we got it. He said, we got it. I said, you do. I said, I applaud you for it. You got the right music. You got the right standards. You got the right Bible. You got a nice carpet. I, I, I'm convinced. I am convinced that you, and mine does the same thing. I'm convinced that you got all those things. He said, well, what's wrong then? I said, I'd rather not say. I'd rather not say. And he said, hey amen, that's embarrassing to fall while you're preaching, hey amen. I'd rather not say. And he said, well, hey, he said, what is it then? I said, you really want to know? He said, I do. I said, you. He said, what do you mean? I said, not that you're not a good man of God. I said, but when you walk up on the platform in the pulpit, if you're not excited about this thing, how in the world do you expect your people to get excited? Amen. Lord, I preach for some guys that mind me of the first Baptist of the deep freeze pastor by Jack Frost. Amen. I mean, honestly, man of God walks up in a pulpit and he acts like he'd rather be somewhere else or he's back plump and depressed. Hey, I know there's enough in this world to depress all of us, but my soul, when I come to church, I want to worship. Amen. So the priest, the priest, the priest were purified. Number two, real quick tonight. Churches like this are tough because you got to move on because y'all are easy priests, so you have to move on. Number two, the people were purified. Huh? A polluted congregation will hinder spiritual services. Amen. If we are to have revival, we must get cleaned up. We must get cleaned up. You know what God, God, God said through Nehemiah? He said, make sure the priests are right. And he said, make sure the people are right. Hey, and by the way, I believe that's the chronological order it ought to be in. I believe the pulpit ought to get off on the pew. Amen. If the preacher gets it, hey, if you want to be excited with your pastor, get excited with him. Amen. So understand, I believe that. I believe people ought to do their best, live a pure and holy life. I do. Amen. Don't you believe that? I mean, we can't expect God to show up and God to move and the Spirit of God to fill our churches if we're not living clean. Got to live right, man. Hey, I know we're not perfect, but we got to live right. Amen. We can't expect that. Number three, look back if you would. The places were purified. Look at verse 30. The Bible says, and purified the people and the gates and the wall. The place was purified. They wanted to make sure that what God had given them was nice and well kept. Uh, they wanted to make sure uh, that the walls that were just put up, how God had blessed them, uh, they were appreciative of it and they took good care of it. Amen. Listen, we're here to worship today, not because we are worthy, but because He is worthy. Amen. That's why we're here. You know that. And so understand three areas again. The priests were purified. The people were purified. And the place was purified. Amen. I like it. Listen, years ago, we used to have, well, we have revival meetings. We'd have somebody get on every row of the church and get out and pray over every row. I'm sure, Brother Barker, you've done that in the past. Just pray over every row. Most of the time, I know who's sitting in my own membership, pretty much about every section, and you can get out and you can pray. Why? Because, listen, I'm telling you, this building will not bring revival. This beautiful facility will not bring revival. Sitting on the rocking chair on the front, and by the way, that's got to be one of the nicest deals but it will not bring revival. Hey, I want you to understand, your pastor, listen, he can preach, but I do not believe he is the one that brings revival. I believe with all my heart that the Holy Ghost, I believe God's got to find a place that he wants to be at. And if he can find a place he wants to be at, he'll send revival. Amen. So now think about it. The people of God have come through a victory. The people of God have been blessed. The people of God got the wall. Nehemiah has stayed on the wall. He said, oh no to oh no. Amen. He stayed on the wall. He did not let anybody get him down. He finished the work of God that God called him to do. And that's worship time. I like worship, don't you? Amen. First time I was introduced, you, I did not grow up. Independent, fundamental, Bible believing, call me out to the side Baptist. I did not grow up that way. I did not. I grew up in convention church. I thank God the preacher that I come up under was a KJV guy. 
preached the Word of God as straight as any of us preach it. I thank God for that. But listen, they started changing on things. Not him, he went on the glory. But they started changing on things and I couldn't stay apart anymore. But listen, I was up in Greensboro, North Carolina. I was up in Greensboro. And I was at uh, the Jubilee and I can still hear him on the radio. 4530 West Window Revenue, Greensboro, North Carolina. Brother Jimmy Dillon. I can still remember, I loved that man of God. One of the sweetest people I've been around my life. But don't you listen to this. Uh, Brother Dillon was, had Jubilee every year. T.D. Burgess would moderate the meeting and they'd have this meeting and they'd have preachers in to preach it. I wasn't one of them. I was a young preacher, about 21, 22 years old and I'd go up to that meeting and you know how it is when you're about that age, you know so much. Amen. So I had one of the guys with me from the church. And we sat on the second row from the back at Sound Light Baptist Church. Brother Hinkle Little got up to sing. I didn't know who Hinkle Little was. He got up to sing. And he started singing that song we all know well. I'm going to die on the battlefield. Lord, he got to singing that song. And the next thing I know, it got plumb loud. And then something happened to me I'd never seen. A fella jumped up on the pew and started running back and forth, hollering and waving a hanky right there in front of me. I looked over at that boy beside of me. He was with me, you know, 20-some years old. I knew it all. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll never act like that. But I did. <laughs> Amen. You know why? Because every now and then, every now and then it gets bigger than you are. Every now and then it gets more than you are. Every now and then you get to can't help it. So, and it's just got to come out somewhere. Amen. Well, I got to move on. Y'all keep me too long. Let me move on. I want you to look at something else with me if you would. Look at verse 43. If you had verse 43, say amen. If you hadn't found it yet, act like you have. Nobody knows the difference. Look at verse 43. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. For God had made, now watch this phrase. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced. So that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Man, what a verse. Isn't that great, preacher? You know what's happening now? They're going to worship. You know why? You say, oh, preacher, they're going to worship. Well, let's just look at it. First of all, what was the cause of their joy? What was the cause of their joy? If you look at the verse, the Bible says, watch verse 43, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. Notice it said God made them rejoice. Some would say they were worshiping because the wall was done. I don't think so. No, I think that was part of it. I think that was part of it. But I want you to see this, and I believe this. I believe their greatest joy was what God had done. Hey, man, you know what they knew? They knew what no way they could have built that wall. They knew there wasn't no way they could have held off that enemy. Somebody help me now. They knew there wasn't no way they could make it through that trial. They knew there was no way. And you know why they're rejoicing? Because they're on the other side of it now. And they're looking back. And they're thinking, hallelujah, look what God has done. What in the fire are you doing sitting here on a Tuesday night? You ever thought about that? There's some people someday in your life one not have thought you'd mount to nothing. Well, Barker thought that about Brother Jonathan. Well, they mount to nothing. But you know you sit here today and got your little family going to the house of God, going to church, living for Jesus. You ain't on a bar stool. You're not somewhere in the world. You're not on some dance floor somewhere. Hey, you love your family and you love your God and you love your church. You know what you ought to do tonight? You ought to worship and say it like this. Look what God has done. Amen. Amen. Number one, cause of joy. Number two, I want you to watch this. Look at the consecration of joy. 
Amen. Look at verse 43. Also that day they offered great sacrifice to for God. Uh, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Now if you go on down, look a little farther. And at that time were some appointed over the chambers for the treasure, for the offerings, for the fruits. If you go back up uh, to the scripture uh, that we started with, you'll find out uh, in verse number 31, Then I brought up the priests of Judah upon the wall and appointed two companies to them that gave thanks for every one went on the right hand of the wall and toward the dung gate. And he began to talk about what happened here. Uh, they began to bring, and you can read it through the chapter, they began to bring sacrifices. That's the consecration of joy. Amen. They begin to bring sacrifices. Listen, I said this to my church, and I can say it to you as well. Many of you made sacrifices so this auditorium could be built. Many of you made sacrifices Sunday so that offering could be given to pay off uh, what you're trying to pay. That many, there are people. May, listen, I got members of my church. It's not always the people at my church that have got the most that sacrifice the most. Amen. I said, preacher, you like having rich people in your church. I like having rich people that give. Amen. You say why? Because God's blessed them, and they can be a blessing to others. Amen. When we started this new renovation and we knew it was going to be between two and two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that's before we even started a million dollar building behind it. And when we got ready to do this, God sent a family to our church. He's a contractor and, and he and his wife and little girl, and I'm telling you what, that little girl Faith, she is about, she made Miss Wendy a cherry pie for her birthday. She ain't been about six, seven years old. And you all seen her mixing that thing since the video of that. And anyway, he is some kind of, he come and said, preacher, Y'all getting ready to do that whole thing, so here's what I want to do. He said, I'll do the contract work. Won't charge anything. I'll do all my labor. Won't charge anything. We'll do everything on our end. You, you just have to pay the subs to do it. I said, sounds good to me. Praise God. Amen. Well, he built, I can't wait for Brother Jonathan to preach behind this pulpit. I think the pulpit, if you want to buy it, would cost about $10,000. I mean, it's one of them boys. I've always wanted one goes out and wraps around, got them column things on it, you know, things on I mean, I can hide behind Somebody come in shooting, I can hide behind it. Amen. I even got metal plate in the front. Amen. I'll grab Miss Wendy. Rest of them, they better just shoot back. It's all I can tell them. I'm hiding. Amen. But listen, don't you know, you know what I call it? When I walk in behind it on Sunday, I don't call it a pulpit. His, a pulpit. His name is Paul. So I tell people this is the pulpit. Amen. That's what I call it. I walk by you and say, oh, preacher, that's sacrilege. Don't worry about it. You ain't got no pulpit. Ain't no word in the Bible that's going to get all messed up over. Amen. Or podium or anything else. But I get behind the pulpit. Amen. You say, preacher, what do you mean? Just, I mean, look at that, man. Nine. Was this in the other building or is this new? Oh, who's Caleb? Where you at, Caleb? Well, who's it? Did you build this, Caleb? You do it out of love for Jesus. Amen. He said, it's your idea. Hallelujah. Amen. So we got to name this. Thing. I don't, we can't name it a Paul pit, a Kalab pit. I don't know what we'll call it. Amen. <laughs> that sounds kind of Greek or Hebrew, don't it? Amen. Hey, understand. Understand. There is a consecration of joy. Listen. You know what we are to offer the Lord is a sacrifice of praise. What, and, and i got to hurry. One of, the greatest pictures, one of the greatest pictures of that was during, and I think I shared this with you guys up there at Turkey Grove, Cove, but one of the greatest pictures of that was a man in my church during COVID. It's a man in my church during COVID, Brother Jerry Harmon. That probably one of the sweetest Christians I'd ever met, ever pastored. Brother Jerry Harmon was diagnosed with ALS. You know it as Lou Gehrig's disease. I think that's one of the most horrible deaths I have ever seen. I mean, it was unreal. Tacked his muscles in his body and couldn't hold his head up and hang. And his little wife has struggled. She's in a rest home. And, and I'm, I mean, during 2020, it, it was horrendous. And he was dying with Lou Gehrig's disease. He'd come into church with his head down like this and come walking up and get his songbook. And he, or, or, or outside where we were. And he'd try, to, he'd try to do what he could. and couldn't hardly hold his head up. One of the greatest Christians i ever known. One Sunday morning, I'm standing out there on a flatbed trailer. You know how it was, and I'm preaching. 
on that flatbed trailer. Y'all remember that during COVID? Y'all, I don't know how y'all did. Did, did, y'all, did y'all do something like that, Brother John? But I'm preaching on that trailer. We had everybody's in the cars, you know. And I'm preaching. That's the weirdest time. I still can't believe we went through that. But I was preaching, and I was preaching as hard as I could preach. And I looked out, and I saw a cane sticking out a window of a car with a white handkerchief on it. And every time I'd get on something good, Brother Jerry would be waving a handkerchief right out there in the car. That's a sacrifice of praise. Hey, man, oh, listen now. Lord, I'm feeling too good. Listen, it's easy to preach and sing and shout when everything's good, when every dollar's met, when every dime's in. But we got to learn, praise God, the God of a mountain is also God in the valley, and we can worship him anytime and anywhere. Amen. Number three. I don't have a 14. Hold on. Cause of joy. Number two, consecration of joy. Number three, I want you to see the crowd of joy. Say, preacher, what are you talking about? Look back over verse 30. The Bible says, And the priests and the Levites pure themselves, purify the people and the gates and the wall. Then if you go over and you begin to look a little farther in the chapter, and you'll find out in the verses we've read here in the Word of God, you'll find out they offer great sacrifices. But look down the latter part of verse 43. The wives also and the children rejoiced. I want to say this and move on tonight. You would have to admit with me that there's a generation in America today that's crazy. Would you admit it? I, I mean, they're against everything and they don't even know why they're against it. Right? I, I mean, I mean, it, it's amazing to me. And, and I think sometimes, who's raising that crowd? Right? Somebody said social media, and I agree. I think that, and absentee parents, amen, but here's what amazes me. Is that group that we probably lost a generation, and there's a lot of young people that have never experienced real worship. Even if they get involved in it, they go to this junk like church in Charlotte. That's church in Charlotte, Sunday mega church. Mega church. Got stuff all over the place. Guy looks like he ought to you know, be somewhere in a skinny jeans competition. I don't wear skinny jeans because I don't look good in them, praise God. And they're skinny, amen. But don't you listen. You know what they did Sunday? I, I, I saw somebody put in an article, so I looked up and see if it's true. They did not mention the resurrection. They did not mention the blood. They did not mention salvation. They did not mention the cross. You know what they said? Because they wanted everybody to feel included. You know what I told my church? I said, I got news for them. If you want to be included, somebody better preach the cross and somebody better preach the blood. Why? Because you ain't going to be included unless you get in by the cross and washed in the blood. Amen. Amen. But here's what I was going to say. There's a lot of young people who've never experienced real revival and real joy. They never have. They grow up in church all their life. 17, 18 years old, they get out of it. You know why? I, I'm going to be honest with you, and I know how it is. You, you can talk to Preacher Barker. Listen, Preacher Barker's been in this thing a long time. How many years just preaching, Brother Barker, if you mean preaching? 50 years just preaching. Preaching. Brother Barker, you go to church and you sit in your home church here because you've pastored some great churches and God's done some great things, but you sit in your home church here, and a lot of these folks may think church is like this everywhere. Because they don't go. People all the time talk to me. And they'll, they'll tell me, but oh, Brother Chris, it must be awesome. Get to go to these churches and preach. Not all of them. I remember preaching one time, drove all day to get to a church. And after a lady told me I was sitting in her seat and nobody else was in the building, I knew it was going to be a good meeting. 
That is a true story. I lie not. I drove all day long, walked in. I was the only one. She didn't even know who I was. I could have been a lost businessman. She said, sir, you're in my seat. Nobody else was there. She was an organ player. I was sitting over going, God, let her mess up. Let her toes get caught in between them pedals. <laughs> Say, preacher, you didn't feel that way. Yes, I did. I'd have said more to her if she's bigger than me. I was, I was sitting there on Monday night, Brother Jonathan. I was sitting there on Monday night, Brother Barker, tears dripping down my face. You say, preacher, was God blessing you? Lord, no. It was dead. It was so dead. I've been in graveyards, walked through them at 11 o'clock at night that had more life. You know, I had tears coming down because I thought I got to be here to Friday. Thank goodness the golf was good. Some of y'all coming here, your young is getting raised in this. You better appreciate it. Amen. Number four, and it is the last one. The crowd of joy. But then I want you to see the cognizance of joy. I didn't really know what that word meant, but I got a thesaurus and I looked it up because I wanted one stone to see, and I thought that'll work. The cognizance of joy. I want you to look back at verse number 43. They were rejoicing with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Sour face, down in the mouth attitudes do not give much of a testimony for Christ. Every pastor has this, and I'm not being mean, but we, I think God keeps us humble. Every pastor has people that you don't want to talk to before Sunday morning service. If you walk in the building, you don't want to start talking to them. If you do, you're going to be so depressed the time you get there, you're going to need Xanax, man. Uh-huh. I mean, you, I've got some people, if they're on the side I come in on, I go on the other side. Oh, what kind of pastor's heart is that? I'll be all the pastor's heart they want, but I'm going to get done preaching first. I always feel bad when I feel good because I know I'm going to feel worse. I mean, you meet something. You ever met somebody that's never had a good day? People come in our churches. We had a lady one time, and, and, and she wasn't a member of the church until she found out that we always gave the widow something, then she joined. True story. I'm not making that up. She was sweet to me, a sweet lady, but she sat on the back row. We had a young girl come in one Sunday with her, with her and she looked over at the young girl, and she said, now, y'all don't come in this church with a dress on short like that. Somebody heard her and told me about it. I went to her and said, do you want to come back? Well, yeah. I said, don't you ever say nothing like that again. I said, you don't know that girl right there lost. You don't know where she came from. She's visiting here and she is welcome as much as you are. Amen. I say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Here's what I'm saying. There's a cognizance of joy. What is it? People ought to be able to see that joy. The real testimony of being a Christian is the joy that it brings. Pleasure seasons for pleasure, pleasures of the world's for season. You agree with that, right? Joy's not found in the bottom of a bottle or in a needle on the arm. Real joy is found in Christ. It's found in Christ. Amen. I will say this to you tonight. We got to get cleaned up for worship. You know, I think sometime. I I think sometime when I close this, that don't mean a whole lot. So don't don't just start getting ready to go. Amen. I've closed that thing. It's almost like I can control people. Y'all listen to this. I am convinced that we need to get back to understanding we have a lot to praise Him for. Can, Can I just share this with you tonight? God has been so good to me. I'm going to be honest. You don't have any idea where I come from. Grew up in a little mill town. 
My daddy was a gambler, raised fighting chickens, gambler. Mama took me to church. My wife and I got married. We got a little bitty mobile home with a deck on it. You had to walk by faith when you walked on it. I know what it's like for people to bring groceries and lay them on the front porch and you're glad you got bacon, eggs, or you got some milk. I remember all that. Amen. I look at my life now and some things God's blessed me with. You know what I think sometimes? I don't deserve any of that. But I learned a concept a long time ago. Giving it shall be given. And that don't just go for money. That goes for everything. Amen. And so tonight, Amazing Grace, can I say this as a pastor to you, one pastor from another church to you? Don't lose your worship. No matter how blessed you get, you find something to praise Him for. Amen. I like Brother Jonathan's. I, did, I had a deacon one time in my first church come to me so mad one time. We'd been... We'd been in about a two and a half week revival meeting. He coming to me so mad. And he made a statement to me, and I've never forgot this statement. He said to me, when are you ever going to be satisfied? And when he said it to me, I looked at him and I said, never. I said, because God's always got something better. And he's always got something bigger. I'm never going to just sit still. Amen. My desire on White's Mill Road, and we got it. Part we got quite a bit of it now. I want to own the whole road, all of it, up and down it. So you can have a Christian school. Not if God don't write me a letter and tell me forty-seven times. No, I'm not. And why should I do that? One of the young men in my church, pastor the church of Christian school, and they all go over there and let him deal with it. Hallelujah! We'll pray for him. Preacher, you can take care of them. You spank them any time they do wrong. Yeah, right. Until they do wrong. That's another message. That's totally different. We're trying to end on a good note here. You ain't got a school to you. Okay. There's nothing wrong. I, I, I'm for them, by the way. But, but just not for me. What do you got to worship him for tonight? Hey, man. What walls has he built in your life? What walls has he brought down in your life? Do you remember? Do you remember Jericho? Do you remember that Joshua was told to shout before the walls fell? Hey Amen. You can stand to your feet tonight. As a pianist comes tonight, however Brother Jonathan does his invitation, I, I want to I wanna just do this on a Tuesday night. Here we are on a Tuesday night. Just come through Easter. What a wonderful time Easter is. Amen. We celebrate the greatest event in Christian faith. But I wonder tonight after this Sunday and Monday and Tuesday, if maybe you just want to find you a place somewhere on an altar and, and worship. You say, preacher, what do you mean worship? Thank Him and praise Him for the help God gave you today. Thank Him for your kids being healthy. Thank Him for the bills that He allowed you to pay. Thank Him for what He allowed in your life and gave you. Just praise Him. The altar's filled. You can do it right there in your seat. Right there where you are. Just say, Lord, I want to praise You. I want to thank You. Lord, I want to tell You, You're worthy of all of my praise. I promise you, Brother Jonathan Barker, if I have anybody to boast of, it's Christ. I really do. I look at my life sometimes, and Brother Jonathan, I know me. I know my faults. I know my failures. I know my doubts. I know me. And I look at my life sometimes and think, why in the world would God be so good? <laughs> Hallelujah to somebody so undeserving. Amen. Let's just worship Him in a minute, church. Just praise Him right now. Just thinking. You'll be surprised what kind of little revival you'll start having right there at your seat or right here on your spot on the altar just by saying, Lord, I want to thank you for this. Lord, I want to worship you and praise you for this. Lord, I want to thank you for this. Hey, Amen. Lord, I want to bless you for this. I want to thank you for the husband you gave me, the wife you gave me. I want to thank you for my kids. 
Lord, I want to thank you for that home, that roof over my head. I want to thank you for the food on my table. Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for the clothes on my back. Lord, I just want to praise you and thank you. Because, God, you have been so good to me. So good. So good. Oh, yes. Is anybody finding anything to praise Him about tonight? <laughs> Is anybody finding anything to worship Him over? He stood them walls, hadn't He? You're looking back the other way now, and everything's behind you. Because God's been good. Let's clean up for worship. Brother Joth is my friend. If you ever saw me step away from a right Bible for right things, I hope you love me enough. Say, preacher, I love you. Be careful about that stuff. I mean that. I know I'm 59. I don't know how much longer I'll pass. I'm planning on preaching until I can't. But I'm going to tell you this. When it's all said and done one day, I want to make sure I'm finished well and a finished right. One of the greatest compliments I got was from a young man that I preached for last week. I was his pastor. You heard me talk about it last night. He was 16. And he said this to me. He said, Preacher, you're still preaching the same you did when I was 16. I know I don't fit. I, I tell my Sister Pastor, Brother Crabtree, I tell him all the time, I say, you know what we are? We're dinosaurs, man. You're just a young dinosaur. You're not all that young, to be honest. You're in your 40s, right? Mid, late, mid. Oh, well, yeah, you're still kind of young. But you listen. Preaching like this, shouting churches like this, it, it's, it's, it's dinosaur, man. The world thinks we're crazy. If they'd have seen that service the other night up there at Thanks Calvary and Brother Cooper and, and all that, pray, yeah, I'm telling you, one time it was like you got to direct traffic in that place. You know what they'd have said? You know what they'd have said? Them people are a bunch of lunatics. That's the same people that's got their hair four different colors. That's the same people that's got log chains around their neck. And that's, the, that's the same people that lays in the road in front of tractor trailers protesting. I'm smarter than that. Maybe we're not so crazy. I always tell people like this, I quit. I might be a nut, but I'm screwed on the right bolt with Holy Ghost Loctite. Red Loctite. And the red for the blood. Amen. Hallelujah, preacher. 